G'day guys, we thought we'd do a little bit of a video for you on our journey in choosing a new caravan. So a little bit of background for you. Um, we have most recently sold our MDC Forbes Hybrid. It was a hybrid 13 foot caravan that had one bunk in it. Before that, we have had tents, swags, rooftop tents, soft floor camper trailers, hard floor camper trailers. Uh, we've had a 16 foot um, full size caravan and then we've had the hybrid so we pretty much had a little little bit of everything yeah yeah so this video is kind of specific to our journey and um, our needs or more wants um, but I think it is relevant to other people that are in the market looking at buying their own uh, first caravan or, or um, you know or like us maybe upgrading a caravan for an expanding family and on that note, that's why we're looking at upgrading from our MDC Forbes hybrid. Uh, we've had another baby, we've got yep. two kids now. And we, and we, need defi a we definitely could make it work with the Forbes, but we do want to do another lap in 2025. And from traveling for six months in 2020, we came to realize some of the things that we wanted, like to make it a little bit more comfortable. Yeah. So we'll go into that in a minute. but. Yeah, so we're kind of lucky in that res respect. We kind of know, we got a pretty good idea yeah. of what we want. Um, and but, hopefully this is the long-term van. <laughs> yeah. I think we'll probably go the other way. Once the kids are out of the van, we'd definitely yeah. go for a smaller van again. Yeah. So the MDC Forbes that we had, that was about, when we bought it, it was about $45,000. They've gone up since. For 40, I think they're about 60 now. I think so. Yeah, yeah. everything's gone up, and we'll, we'll chat about that yeah. in a minute as well. But that was about 45 grand. Um, yep, Chinese made van. Our uh, experience with it, having done, it did about 30,000 Ks, maybe more, of all sorts of crappy conditions, crappy roads, bogged on the beach, um, yeah, through lakes and water crossings and all sorts. And it went really, really well. Uh, we had no serious issues with it. And if there was something that that, company did that was full size and uh, met our weight limitations and all the rest of it, then we'd, we'd have no qualms going with Yeah, we were more than, more than happy with MDC. Um, it's just there was nothing that ticked all our boxes. The one that came close was the, um, uh, the XT16 HR family, um, but we just felt that was a little bit too much of a compromise. It had bunks, but no internal kitchen, and that's something we really wanted. Yeah, um, and the bunks were in the middle of the van, sort of where the living area was. Yeah. So again, sort of like what we already had, that Forbes 13, we could make that work, definitely. We And for weekenders and maybe a couple of weeks a year, just on the annual trip, be happy to do that. But for living in something full, full time for 12 months, um, we just want something a bit more spacious. Yep. So on that note, should we get into our wish list? Our checklist, yeah. First thing, off-road um, capabilities. So something we can drag on the beach, gravel roads, that sort of thing, yeah? Yeah, and that comes down to things like, we don't want to have issues with dust ingress, water ingress, uh, we don't want cabinetry falling off. Yeah. Um, a lot of off, uh, sorry, on-road and semi-off-road vans have clearance issues because they're, they're quite long vans we're looking at now. You know, the departure angle's not great. And then there's uh, plastic pipes and stuff underneath there that we're, yeah. you know, we're likely to smash off. And I don't, I don't think we realized how much of an issue dust is until we started traveling and we saw people pulling up to caravan parks and national parks, getting out their vacuum cleaners and their blowers and, yeah. and completely like just dusting out their van. I didn't, we, we had no idea that was a, it's really funny, like just, yeah. just before five o'clock drinky poos is the 4.30 vacuum yeah. harmony. <laughs> <laughs> um, and we never had that issue with the MDC, I guess because it was a little hybrid and everything sort of was blocked off from the dust. So yeah, that's something that's been a big thing for us. Um, and that scares the bejeebas out of you when you start looking at a particular brand of caravan and you start listening to people's feedback owners feedback that have them and they say oh you've got to get the dust reduction system and yeah and we think oh and people talking about having to tape up doors and seals around the the hatches just like it's a normal 
thing that has to be done. Just to do like, say, a 10K gravel entry track onto a station stay or something. Like, you know, we want to do thousands of Ks of gravel and I, I don't want to be out there with a roll of duct tape. <laughs> so yeah, off-road, um, we want full-size caravan. So ideally we didn't want to go with another pop top. No particular reason, we just, like the idea of being able to pull up and walk straight into your van, pull over, for, pull over for lunch and, and have a full size van you can walk into. Yeah. I just want to say, but yeah. yeah, for no particular reason though, pop tops, yeah. a lot of pros. I don't know why people are so dead against them. Yeah. The airflow that you get from a pop top is awesome. Like all that, cause the, the whole skirt around the top, you can, you can unzip or you could on ours. Yeah. And all that hot air just goes straight out. So great for airflow. Yep. Yeah. Um, obviously we need bunks, um, that's a given. Um, oh, and on that, we, we, we probably want to go double bunk, but potentially we'd go triple bunk, not because we're planning to have any more kids or anything like that, but um, just for storage, quite like the idea of having maybe the very bottom bunk just with tubs of toys for the kids or whatever. Yeah, I know you say that, but I, I think two bunks. I, initially I said three, but yep. I think two is better, especially as they get older, just for headroom, yep. being able to sit up in bed. Um, but yeah, not a not a huge deal. Um, internal kitchen and ensuite. Uh, not, Why? Um, well, kitchen. I think the, the biggest thing for us, I think, was mornings. Yeah. You know, you wanting to get up and, and make yourself a coffee, but you don't really want to go outside and have to get dressed. Uh, the other thing was wind. Being from WA, we are well versed with wind, so being able to escape the wind and, and cook lunch or breakfast. Or Especially dinner. free camping. Not so bad in a caravan park where you're in a yeah. built-up area and there's a lot of wind breaks. But if you camp right on the beach or something, and you you know it takes you 45 minutes to heat some oil to cook cook some fish or something, it yeah. starts to wear you down. And we don't necessarily want a full-size kitchen. We'd be happy to forego an oven and just have a just the hot plates and a sink really. Yeah. And a fridge, you want the fridge inside. And a compressor fridge. <laughs> and not a, not a deal breaker, but ideally we wanted the kitchen on the awning side. So someone can be in the van preparing food and you can still talk to, you know, whoever's sitting under the awning. So there's a little bit of inclusion still. Yeah, pass but, food yeah, out. Yeah, that's something a few people have mentioned to yeah, us. Yeah, and that makes sense. Yeah. The ensuite, uh, so obviously a toilet and a shower. Initially, I was adamant that it had to be a separate shower and toilet. Um, and I think that's probably what we'll end up doing, but yeah. I don't think it's that much of a deal breaker. No, we'd be prepared to compromise on that. If we found something, so we want something as small as possible with all this stuff. Like we really, really did initially want something around 18 foot. Yeah, so that's on the checklist too, 80 yeah. foot or under. And when you're looking at vans that size with bunks and internal kitchens and all the rest of it, you're, you're pretty much looking at um, combined shower yeah, and toilets. Yeah, you've got to compromise somewhere. So we would have compromised on that. Uh, is that everything? Uh, bed orientation. Um, again, when you're looking at like an 18 foot van, you're probably going to be looking at an east-west bed, which means you're climbing over each other to get out. Once you get up to around 20 foot, you can get north-south beds. That seems to be the point of difference there. Yeah. Um, we're not bothered. Uh, we have good bladder control. <laughs> can I say that or not? No, I don't know. It's just, it, it, it made no difference <laughs> to us. We didn't care one way or another. We're not, we're not picky with, with beds. We've had both. We've had yeah. a north-south bed. We've had east-west beds in, um, van, in uh, camper trailers and stuff. And it honestly didn't bother us. We get in, in bed once at the start of the night and we get out in the morning and we get up at the same time. Yeah, um, yeah that's a big deal for some people, not for us. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, as small as possible around the 18 foot mark um, and less than three ton uh, at ATM, fully loaded and with a, enough payload to be usable. So we, we, we know that we need about five to 600 mm -hmm. kilos of payload. So we really needed something with a tear about 2.4 tonne and an ATM of about three tonne. Um, and that we came to realize was quite challenging. Very, <laughs> very difficult. Uh, and then all the usuals like solar, water, you know, good battery systems, but that, that we can all change down the track anyway. So yep. not a big deal. It's got to have air con. Air con, yes. Um, most vans do anyway. And then the big thing for us was we didn't really want a timber frame van just with 
you know, water ingress and having to worry down the track about rotting wood. And We've had two caravans and um, both of them have at some point had water come have, into them. Yeah. The MDC was fully composite, so it wasn't a huge issue. Like I was able to get up there, clean it up, re-silicate it, not a big issue. The uh, old Viscount that we had, Miranti frame, um, when I started stripping the wall and stuff, I, there was quite it was a, a lot, lot of rot. rot. Yeah. yeah, and that is becomes a huge issue. Yeah. yeah. Um, so that checklist was quite, I think that was quite like comprehensive and, and that's probably why we've struggled to find something. And probably quite unrealistic. Yes. Yeah. So we've looked at pretty much everything in Australia, honestly. We've looked at... Yeah. Not, with... not in person, obviously. We've only looked at... In person, we've only looked oh, at, at things we can see in WA because we can't travel at the moment. So we've... WA is super... I mean... Dover is isolated at the best of times. It's a long drive from anywhere. But in COVID times, we're mega isolated. <laughs> we're a separate country at the moment, yeah. like it or not. So uh, we're only able to look at brands in WA, which is fairly limited. Yes. And then because of our checklist and how um, comprehensive it is, that ruled out, you know, like 90% of brands anyway. Yeah. Um, but what we did, obviously, like things that were, you know, if it ticked all the boxes, but it was 20 foot, or it ticked all the boxes, but it was, um, but it had a timber frame or whatever. Like we, we still kept that in our list, our short list. Yeah. And then what we did is we shortlisted everything in like an Excel um, document. Spreadsheet. Spreadsheet, yeah. Tiff's, that's her thing. Spreadsheets. <laughs> and then, um, you know, we we uh, sort of ruled things out as we went from there. So I'll give you a quick look at our spreadsheet. It's it's not fully like comprehensive there right now because no. we've removed quite a lot of things that we just. Because it was for us, it wasn't for this video. So we've removed things when we just decided, nah, for whatever reason. Yeah. But there's a bit of a look at how we did it anyway, um, if you wanted to do something like that yourself. Yeah, so we just listed the brands and, and then we put our checklist along the spreadsheet and, and tick the box whether it did or didn't meet that criteria. Mm. So yeah, there was a lot of brands we couldn't look at because they were based over East. And then that also, like it'd be, it'd be great to have a WA um, built caravan for you know, warranties and for um, service centres and stuff like that. Um, but we are totally prepared to buy something anywhere in Australia. Yeah. As long as we can have a look at it before we buy it. I just could not th put the money down without actually physically looking at something. Yeah. The one thing that, that really shocked us as we were doing more and more research was um, to be honest just how crappy some some of these websites are that these manufacturers mm. have like they just i work in marketing and i'm fully aware that you know you should present all of your information um and just some of these companies are just so for instance shocking. for instance some of them um might have 10 different brands that they or 10 different uh, models that they build under a brand mm. and yeah you know, we just want to know which one's the family bunk but they're not called family bunk Hybrid, no. couples, on road, off road. They're all called, you know, the Royal Majestic and the yeah, Premier. Extreme Adventure, and you've got to, you've really got to look through every page on their website and, you know, is this on road? Is it off road? They just don't tell you. There's no. It's just really hard to extract that information. It meant a lot of, a lot of digging around yeah. to get it. Um, so. That was really time consuming because there are a lot of caravan manufacturers in Australia. Yeah. And they're not presenting all of the information as well. So no. you would, you know, see some pictures and a list of inclusions, but there's no mention of price, no mention of weights, um, no dimensions, dimensions, uh, what else? Uh, length. So you don't even know what size van you're looking at. Oh, they all measure their length differently. Some yes. of it's. Some of it's body length and they measure from internal body, some of it's external body, some measure overall um, travel weight, uh, hot, uh, travel length. Yeah. It's very difficult to compare. Yeah, I just, I do not understand why you would not present all of the information on your website. List the price, list the weights, and then, you know, you'd have less people knocking on your door, calling you and emailing you. Yeah. Just. So what that, that me. so what that meant was that we had to make contact with a lot of these companies just to get the information that we needed to be able to you know ever progress with buying one. Um, so I reckon a dozen companies we either emailed or we made phone contact with, 
and you know, left messages and asked them to call us back with email addresses and mobile numbers and all the rest of it. Out of the 12 or so companies that we narrowed down to initially and made contact with, and we don't expect any, we don't expect any, well, we're not like under any false illusion that we should get any better customer service than anyone else, just to make that totally clear. No. We never like name dropped and said, oh, you know, oh, I've got an Instagram account or anything like that. We're not those sorts of people. No. We just, we just were asking basic questions like, can we please have weights, figures, you know, weights, lengths, costs I just think for this specific model? That's customer service 101. Someone contacts you and you get back to them. I just... So out of those dozen companies, honestly, I reckon four or five actually got back to us. Yeah, and the rest we just never heard from. No. Nah. And that was, we, like, there were a couple who were built over East but had dealers over here, and I would I contacted the manufacturer direct and said, can I get this information? Yeah. And then I also contacted the dealer that's yeah. in Western Australia and said, do you have this model on your floor? Can you give me this information? And just, and I would, I rang the, that person and I've emailed them, and six weeks later, I've still not heard back from them. Yeah. And it's like, you, you know, these are $90,000, $100,000 caravans, and they don't want to sell them. Yeah, that's COVID times for you. People are just buying vans left, right and centre and they just, they don't care. They don't, they don't really, they're not bothered if they lose your business because someone else is knocking on their door buying a caravan, so. And on that note, um, I'll, I'll just briefly say a couple of companies that were, uh, not necessarily that we're going with any of them, but a couple of companies that were really good at, at um, correspondence and actually getting back to us and being helpful. And I mean, just the bare minimum, just being good salespeople was JB. Yeah. Um, masterpiece. 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 Um, I emailed them like over Christmas and didn't expect a response. And I, I think I had the general manager or something or, or one of the um, like sort of managers. managers get back to me like over the Christmas period, which I don't expect, but yeah, yeah. that was pretty cool. Um, who else? Oh, Elros. Elros is a West, if you don't know them, they're a West Australian um, caravan manufacturer that build custom stuff. And I'll talk more about them later because they're very interesting. Um, Zone RV over in Queensland. I'll talk more about them later. Um, was that it? Yep. Yeah, that was it. So, um, just, yeah. so probably four companies out of about a dozen actually got back to me. The other thing we were going to mention as well was that um, often we found ourselves going onto third-party websites to find information. So mm -hmm. we'd find a model that we liked the look of and then, you know, you'd Google it and you'd end up on caravan and camping sales, like looking at an ad listing. Yeah. And that's where we often would find weights and, and prices. Yeah. Another interesting thing was sometimes there was a particular model that we were looking at or that uh, seemed to tick all the boxes, but we just couldn't find that information through the through the manufacturer, the dealer, um, owners, forums, which I suggest that you, you get on if you're looking at yeah, any on, particular on, brand. on Facebook. Yeah. Although we have found that a lot of the owners' forums, they won't let you on unless you actually own the caravan. Yeah, and also they can be quite, as you can imagine, they can be quite one-eyed, quite um, yeah. biased. Um, but there's definitely some good information there if you read between the lines. But yeah, what there were, this was one particular van that we were looking at. I, I don't know if you guys saw it, but we were doing, every now and then we do an Instagram story if we were having a look at a van in WA, um, or if we were trying to find some more information, we just couldn't find it. We'd put a story up and say, you know, does anyone have this particular van, this particular layout? Could you please send us a message? We've got a question. And um, there was one particular, and we did that with multiple brands. There was one particular brand, and it's not the one you're probably thinking of, mm. that uh, we had three different, we had quite a few messages about it, but three of them were tradesmen who work on repairing these vans and said, do not buy any of that particular brand because they're a fire hazard and they're dangerous. Um, and that just goes, I'd never heard anything negative about this company before, so that just goes to show that you need to really, you're handing over a large, sum of money you need to really do your research yeah. and i think that that means getting on owners for owners forums on facebook and stuff and talking to people that own these things and that have had warranty work and service work and all the rest of it yep it's fraught with danger yeah and then another big thing that we discovered was false claims of um so I, you know one of our checklist items was having a timberless van 
So a lot of websites we found were advertising the fact that they had fully composite vans when in fact they weren't. Yeah, so this was a this was a total eye opener to us. We weren't expecting this. Look, we know that the caravan industry is totally unregulated. There's some wild claims to sell stuff. Um, but yeah, the whole timberless um, composite panel van, what they're doing, what that means if you're not sure, composite, it's either like, and I'm not an engineer, so this is a like in real layman's terms, but basically it's just timberless. Some of them even frameless. The panel itself is the frame. Um, but you, it's a sandwich panel. You've got a layer of either aluminium or fiberglass um, and then you've got uh, often a bonded layer of um, foam insulation inside there and then another layer of um, aluminium or fiberglass and that's why they call it a sandwich panel. The way that some of these companies are getting around or being a little bit creative with their marketing when they talk about composite panels, they'll say their fan, van is fully composite but the exterior cladding will be a three mil thick composite panel. So it's like, you know, 0.8 mil aluminium, tiny little bit of insulation inside, 0.8 mil aluminium, and then that's stuck or screwed or glued onto a timber frame. So it's still a timber frame caravan. It's just that the exterior cladding, the exterior sheet is, a, is technically speaking a composite panel. But then they're trying to sell these things saying they're a fully composite van and they're not really. Mm. They're still a timber frame van. So that was surprising. Quite a lot of companies are doing that. And we even had, um, yeah, there's even people that have contacted us and said, we chose this van, it ticks all your boxes, it's fully composite, and then we've done a little bit of digging and we find out it's really not. It's either got, it's either got timber frames on both sides or the sides are proper, you know, sandwich panel, but the front and rear have timber frames in them. Yeah, or, or timber floor. The yeah. composite panels. Yeah, plywood floors. So they're full composite, but plywood floors. Yeah. Um, anyway, on the whole timber thing, like I'm, I'm not an engineer. Uh, I've only ever owned two caravans. Um, yeah, and I mean, there's a lot of people travelling around with timber frame vans. So yeah. they, I don't know. Maybe, maybe we're on the wrong track there, and we should be looking at timber fans. But yeah. I don't know. That's so just what we wanted. So. That's just what we want. I just like the amount of money we're spending. It. I just want. Yeah. I want the perfect van and that's just something that's on my wish list. Another thing that surprised me when we, when we did manage to talk to some of these manufacturers was wait times. Yeah. So um, at the moment you can expect 12 months to two years wait times on, on some vans. Yeah, I think what 12 to 18 months was about the average that we came to find. Yeah. And that's probably why they're not getting back to us because they're selling enough vans anyway. Um, price increases uh, are rife. There, I mean, like, like we said earlier in the video, our little MDC Forbes was about was about forty five thousand. Now I think it's it's around sixty thousand. So that's a substantial yeah. increase. There's probably, I mean, there is reasons for for that, but and I don't know what they all are. But I think it's to do with well for MDC. I think it's to do with import, like yeah. container costs and. And freight and stuff, but I don't. And then I guess with WA, that I mean, with Australian vans, La a, a labour of, and, and COVID, of, yeah, and, and a lot of their parts are probably from overseas as well. So I, I'm not sure. Yeah, and I, I'm hearing that they're struggling to get parts, uh, and the price of steel's gone up through the roof and stuff. So I don't know. We're not going to get fully into that because we don't know enough about it. Yeah. But all you need to know is prices are drastically increased. Um, and secondhand too. So oh, yeah. know, we're, we're not against buying a secondhand van, but yeah. I think when it when it you're gonna have to when people are advertising secondhand vans for as much as they are new. And more in some cases. And more, that's it's craziness. There was a particular van we were looking at that's around a hundred and ten thousand dollars brand new, fully kitted out. Yeah. And there was second hand one locally that was two or three years old, with the same uh, inclusions in it was selling for hundred and forty. Yeah. And that's not uncommon. No. There was, um, you know, a brand that we sat down with that uh, their van was, the, our quote was about $130,000 and he said 12 months ago it would have been one hundred and five. and he had, there was reasons for that, but yeah, just interesting yeah. how much things so have gone up. It's across the board, everyone's had price increases, so. One there yeah, <laughs> so there was one particular brand and, and someone that we know we were speaking to last week has bought one and, and was telling us that 
he has already signed a contract, so his van is is due to be you know made this year or next year. Yeah. Um, but included in his contract is the fact that he still has to pay for any price increases between now and when he actually takes ownership of the van. Um, and that particular brand has gone up ten percent just just recently. I think in the last few weeks. So. That's ten percent more that he's got to pay on his van now, which is crazy because he's already signed the contract. Yeah, I, can, I was really shocked to hear that. So he, so yeah, you, they could tell you a six month build time. It could blow out to a year, and then they can not only are you waiting six months longer to get your van than was originally told, uh, you know agreed upon, but then they smash you with a eight thousand dollar price increase when you've already paid a deposit and locked yourself in. That's disgusting, and it kind of shits me that people are accepting that. Yeah, because but it is what it is. Because now it's open slather for all the rest of the manufacturers to do it too, and it's wrong. Um, so I think one thing that I've really noticed is that there is, I think there's a massive gap in the market. Um, the best, the best, or the highest selling um, four drives in Australia are dual cab utes. Dual cab utes, most of them bar one, have a combined. Um, towing ma a combined mass of about six tons. So most of them, them can tow, they say they can tow three and a half ton, um, but your combined mass generally means that you can, you, once you've loaded your car up, you're really only able to tow around the three ton mark. It's, it's, you're hard pressed to be able to tow three and a half ton with a dual cab U, which is our issue, and that's why we're looking at vans under three ton. I and you'll be doing a video soon on weights and stuff. Yeah, like and that. explaining yeah. if you're not if you're unfamiliar with all those terms and stuff, and you don't really know how I'm figuring that out, then I'm going to tease that all out and make it quite simple to understand in a later video. But basically, majority of families are probably in dual cab utes or wagons that are only capable of towing three ton, um, and trying to find an off road bunk van that is under three ton um, is really difficult and I, yeah, I think there's a gap in the market there. I'm really surprised there's not more of those options. Maybe that's why hybrids are becoming increasingly popular. Hybrids are yeah. crazy popular now, but unfortunately they're all pretty much all imports or they're uh, unobtainable here because you know, the prices are crazy for hybrids in Australia. So all said and done, looking at all of these companies, um, what we came down to was probably- Three different paths we could take <laughs> yeah so zone zone rv over in queensland um i've probably got this wrong i should have done my research before i've done this video <laughs> but the I, I believe that the blokes that started that company were um, marine engineers or marine designers or something like that uh, and he was underwhelmed with what was available and that's how he he started um, zone rv yeah, yeah that, i think that's right isn't it i think so and i think they're quite um like they're quite unique in terms of caravan manufacturers, just with the way they build their vans. Yeah. They're, you know, fully, are they fiberglass or I don't know. Fiberglass, <laughs> uh, yeah, bonded fiberglass, foam fiberglass. Yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah, so, and that's for the same deal for the floor and that's the same deal for all the furniture. So there's no timber, there's no chipboard furniture, there's no plywood floors, there's no timber frames. Yeah, so even their cupboards inside, are, there's no wood whatsoever. Mm. So I really like that. Um, the other thing about, so they're basically like a like a mobile buddy fridge unit on wheels. So really good insulation properties. Um, and the other thing is that make, that makes them, uh, for what you get, they're fairly lightweight um, with yeah, big so payloads. Weights have been good, payloads been good. Really good. Um, initially we discounted Zone just because we thought they were out of our price range. Um, but we came to realize that they weren't really, they were on par with a lot of other manufacturers, so. Yeah, so um, just, I'm going off topic a little bit, but I just wanted to say, I, the price of vans varies massively. There, there is one particular van that we had a look at that's $200,000, oh. and people people buying them. I mean, they're a beautiful van, don't get me wrong, but that just shocked me, 200 grand for a, just for a family caravan, and it's not. Yeah. Yeah, it doesn't really do anything that no other caravan does, but yeah. Anyway, so yeah, zone. Like zone, so ticks the boxes in terms of uh, price is okay. Price, weight, yeah. um, you know, bunks and aircon and all of that stuff. Yeah. Um, but the downsides were. It's Queensland based, which is not a huge deal. No, because one of our friends um, just recently bought one, took ownership of it, so and he's in WA, so we were able to look at his van 
So we, we have been able to look through them yeah. then. Thank you, Kim. Yeah. Um, but the downside for us is it's a 21 foot van, so. 20 foot six, yeah, yeah. it's a big van. We were so, looking at 18 foot, so this is what I'm talking about. That's a, there's compromise there for it's sure. It's well over the size that we wanted. Yep. So that was pathway one. Yep. Pathway two is Elros, so that's the WA builder that we mentioned earlier. Yep. Um, in terms of weight, a um, little bit heavier, but size was perfect. Um, so he does, he's got like, he does a 16 foot chassis, a 17.5, an 18.5, a 19.5, yeah. and then some bigger ones that we didn't look at, but just very customizable. So he's got lots, lots of options for chassis length, and then yeah. with the body and the internal layout, because he is a custom van builder, there's a lot of things he could do for you, which means he can customize that to get your weights down. Um, yeah, they're a really nice Finnish van. They're West Australian owned. Um, they're a little bit, the price was a little bit higher than um, Zone. Yeah. Um, but yeah, these these vans do demand a premium price. Okay, they are. Yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> uh, so Zone, Elros, contenders, and then something kind of going the other way. So they're two quite, um, they're yeah. two quite expensive um, options. Yeah, and I know you get a lot of bang for your buck with these Definitely. two brands, but we also kept saying to each other, you know, are we crazy to, to go all out and, and, and go with one of them when... Because we're compromising for spending over $100,000 and we're still compromising. It's not ticking absolutely every box. Yeah, so if it's not going to tick every box, you know, we've many times we've had this conversation, do we just go with... A Jayco, Ga uh, JB Gator, a JB Gator. Yeah, which are good vans in their own right. We're not saying that they're. Yeah, and there's a reason why Jayco have the market share. They're, yeah. You get good. Dog. Yeah, there's a good reason why Jayco have the market share. You get. Um... They represent really good value for money. Yeah, they no do. No doubt about it. Yeah. And there are people like you. You're saying that there's thousands, tens of thousands of them on the road, and they drag them all over the place. And I would expect, you know. So there's a compromise with a, with a Jayco or a Gator, a JB Gator. Um, there's compromise there. I, you, yeah, they're thirty thousand dollars cheaper. I think we'd be probably compromising on um, build quality. Is that fair to say? I don't know. I guess it's subjective. I don't know. Yeah. 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 Well, it's, it is subjective. It depends where you're taking it and what your expectations yeah. are. Yeah. But that thirty thousand dollars we'd be saving means it's less stress on our finances. It's longer that we could be away. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's more, um, you know, like tourism, helicopter, well, not that we're going to do helicopter flights. <laughs> Jesus! <laughs> with, with a bottle of champagne. <laughs> We've never done that. No, but I just mean there's more tourism stuff. Like, you know, maybe because we bought that van that we can be up in the Kimberley and we can do the horizontal falls tour or something. It would mean mess, more money that we could spend on yeah, um, yeah. family stuff. No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what a dick. Yeah. Uh, and... Even if little bits and pieces did go wrong, it's thirty grand that we could spend on. Um, yeah, uh, and you're and you're pretty handy. I mean, you can fix things. So. Mm. <laughs> so yeah, uh, and to be completely honest with you, to this date, um, we think we know keep, which. Huh? My chair keeps going lower and lower and oh, lower. Does it? <laughs> yeah, to be completely honest with you, to this date. Um, we think we've narrowed down the, the one way we're going to go, but we still... No, we haven't locked anything in yet. We haven't locked... No, nothing's locked in. We think we know which way we're going to go, and we'll probably make a decision in the next... I reckon the next week or so, we're probably going to make a decision. The wait times don't bother us, because we've got a baby, and people who travel with babies are mad. <laughs> we reckon. Um, Although, I tell you what, touch wood, this baby has been amazing. Why would you say that? <laughs> So yeah, we think we know which way we're going. We haven't made a decision yet, um, and we still could. We've backflipped a few times and just gone, nah, let's just go get this. I mean, even last night, we found a second-hand one. Yeah, we did. It was a, a Coromel. Yeah. Second-hand Coromel was, was going for a good price. It's when they were built, it's a couple of years old, so it was fully composite, built in WA before they got bought out by Apollo Everest. And um, price was right, layout was right. Um, yeah. Yeah, it was a, it's a semi off road van though, so that was really the Yeah. But then what makes a semi off road van and an off road van? I don't know. Yeah, well, you know, yeah. And there there are people who say there's no such thing as semi off road vans. I've heard that heap from heaps of people and I don't know. Mm, really? Uh it's either on road or off road. I people say I don't know. Yeah. 
I think that's it. We've rabbited on for long enough. Mm. You can see where we're at. That you can see the thought process, what we wanted, um, a bit of a rant in the middle there, <laughs> <laughs> and then sort of what we've what we've come out with. Three options, um, two sort of more premium end, and one more uh, budget friendly and yeah. less pressure on finances. I, I, I think what has surprised us the most though is that we still haven't found something that ticks every single box like it we 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 honestly thought that we would find something yeah that was going to be absolutely perfect for us yeah so the options have been overwhelming there's heaps of manufacturers but um for us the choices have been quite um underwhelming at the same time yeah but i, I think we're we're pretty picky for that kind of money i want to be yeah expectations are high <laughs> <laughs> there's nothing wrong with that yeah, anyway, so we'll um, make a decision and then we'll... Yeah, we're not going to do big grand reveals no, and, and it might... string it out. We'll just tell you what we got when we got it and why. Yeah, and it might not be... Like, it's it's very personal to us. I think yeah. every caravan you buy is personal to you and what suits your needs. So we're not yeah. saying that what we go with is going to be the best of the best. It's just what suits us. So. It's the best of the best for us. Yeah. Yep. That's a wrap. That's a wrap, baby. Who says that? Oh, young oh. bud, so I'm definitely not saying that. Brody. <laughs> so, yeah, I think... Um, so, what you'll see in the next couple of weeks is me weighing in the car with the tinny on top and all the rest of it. Um, and then I'll use my weights to uh, explain to you how uh, GVM, GCM, ATM, axle weights, uh, all that work. And then you can, you'll can you be able to figure out why we're looking at vans under three tonne from that. Um, that might be of interest to you. And then when we pick a van, we'll let you know. Mm -hmm. Thanks, guys. Cheers. 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 <laughs> <laughs> There's a world fire.